of great surprises in store for you. God has a lot of great surprises in store for you. And um, yes, he really doesn't need any uh, introduction. He just seems just like family to me. Um, I met Yancey back at uh, the radio station, Impact Radio Station, um, many years ago. And we stayed connected um, ever since. And he's going to be such a blessing to you. He's um, a world-renowned international saxophonist. And I gave him a call. I told him about this church. And I told him about the people at this church. And I asked him to open up his heart and to play um, a selection for you to help you enter into a worship with God. It's with Yancey. <laughs> something good, something for the Lord. So, Yancy, I thank you so much. I, I felt the presence of God uh, come out of that warm and blowing. I'm just going to come down for a few minutes. I just want to stand before the people just to explain a little bit about my ministry. I think uh, last week you had an opportunity to see a little bit how my, uh, my ministry flows. I'm going to get right into the message in a few minutes, but I'm here to stand alongside of the pastor and the first lady. Um, the pastor asked me to bring my gifts and my anointing um, to the church, and I'm here to be a blessing to God, to be a blessing um, to the pastor and first lady, to also be a blessing to you. So a lot of times when you see me get up and minister the word of God, just receive by faith right where you're sitting. If you have any uh, health ailments in your body, if there's something you're believing God for, as I open my mouth and speak, the anointing is very heavy um, in my ministry. The anointing will break the yoke while you're just sitting there. Um, everybody doesn't always um, fall out underneath the power of God, so don't be afraid of that. Um, if I ask anybody to come up for prayer, if you want to sit in a seat or something you feel more comfortable with, with the presence of God that way, that's fine too. I don't want anybody to be afraid 
um, of the presence of God. So um, with that being said, I just wanted to share a little bit about um, where I came from, a little bit about my background, and now I'll, I'll jump right into the message. Um, my mom, who went home to be home, be home to be with the Lord in uh, November of last year, she introduced me to God. Um, remember back in the day, she they taught us that prayer. Now lay me down to sleep, pray my Lord so to keep. If I should die before I wake, pray my Lord so to take. And she she taught me as a really little young girl how to call out every family member's name before the Lord. So that was my first introduction um, to God. I knew that God was real because my mama told me so. And then my grandmother, she demonstrated God. She walked holy in front of me. So I had an opportunity uh, to see the word of God in action um, as, a, as a little girl. And I thank God for those praying grandmamas and those praying grandfathers and those praying moms and those praying dads. Because you don't never know what your child is going to grow up to do for the Lord. You just don't know. And then the other thing my, my parents did, they dedicated me to the Lord when I was a little girl. You know, God takes those baby dedications very seriously. He hovers over children that have been dedicated to him. God was talking to me as a young girl before I even gave my heart to him. He was talking to me as a little girl, so you just never know what that child is going to grow up to be and to do for God. So with that being said, I'm going to get right into the message. I'm going to basically be teaching you who you are in Christ, what you can do in Christ. Um, a lot of people just don't know who they really are. Instead of being a victim, God wants you to be the victor. Amen. And he wants you to know how to use your weapons. Now, I'm just going to give you a little glimpse today um, of who you are. And then when we get finished, I'm going to open up for uh, prayer. So if you want to come forward with prayer for anything, just let me know. And, um, you know, come to the altar when I open up that door. And I don't, I don't mind praying for anybody, okay? Okay, first I want to give honor to God, and then I want to give honor to Pastor Smith and um, Sister Smith for um, opening up uh, this opportunity for me to come before you. Um, I'm not new to ministering the Word of God. I've been ministering the Word of God for the past 30 years. Um, some on television, some um, just, you know, traveling um, internationally and nationally, and then some on the radio. So I've been doing this for quite some time. Um, ministers will reach out to my, to me and ask me to come in and minister, minister the word. So I want to give honor to um, the pastor of this house. And then I want to give men, honor to the men and women of God up on the pulpit. Thank you, and I, I'm honored to be in your presence. And Yancy, I want to thank you so much again for coming and being such a blessing. Uh, to me, to God, and to this, this ministry. Amen. And I want to thank my friends who came and supported me. Amen. I have friends I've been friends with for over 30 years who watched me grow in God Amen. and pray for me uh, consistently. But the uh, title of this message is The Power um, of the Tongue. And if you can open up your Bibles, did you bring your Bibles today? Amen. Okay, great. Open up your Bibles to Proverbs 18 and 21. Because I want everybody to understand that, you know, once you accept Jesus in your heart and you're filled with the uh, Holy Spirit, um, there's a lot of power on the inside of you. That same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now dwells inside of you. And you have to know how to tap into it. You have to know how to connect to it. And you, know how, you have to know how to partner with God to see great things happen in your life. And then in, in the lives of other people. So I'm going to be sharing that with you. So Proverbs 18.21. Yeah. And it reads. Okay. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Your tongue is very, very powerful. Um. When you speak, when a Holy Ghost filled believer of God speaks any type of word, whether they be positive or whether they be negative, those words are going to come to pass because you have 
the resurrection power of God living inside of you. So you must, number one, you must be very careful of what you're speaking and also of what you're thinking because it will come to pass. Um, when I first gave my heart to the Lord, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know who I was in Christ. I mean, I talked just like the world talked. You know, I said stupid stuff and wonder why stupid stuff happened. You know, like, oh, like, I used to say stuff like, once a year, I used to get the flu. And once a year, guess what? I got the flu. So, you know, you have to understand that the worlds were created with words. God opened up his mouth and said, let there be, let there be, let there be. So many times in the book of Genesis. That's how the world came into existence. You have that same ability because you were created in the image of God to do the same thing. Now what you're doing is you're going to be speaking the word of God. And um, I'm going to share some examples of um, how you can do that. For instance, um, I'm, you know I explained to you last week that I'm a nurse by trade. And I work for a Blue Care Network. Um, it's a part of Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And usually when I'm in that environment, um, as a nurse, I'm usually on that natural side. I don't really go off into the power of God unless there's a reason for me to pray or, or do something, you know, in the realm of the spirit. But when I'm in a, in a church setting or if I'm just hanging out in the streets, I know how to use my words to get results. So when you learn how to use your words to get results, you won't be beat up all the time by the enemy. Amen. You won't be a victim. You'll learn how to take authority and dominion in the realm of the spirit with your words and take control and rule and reign like God wants you to. For, ex for example, um, a lot of times before I start any type of uh, service, I'm going to give an example. I'll, I'll just take authority and dominion in the realm of the spirit and I'll say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind up principalities, powers. Mice and dominions and spiritual wickedness in high places. What am I doing? I'm using my words to take authority in the realm of the spirit against all those different levels of principalities and powers. I do that in the day when I wake up and I do that at night before I go to bed. I do not let the enemy have his way in my life or the lives of my loved ones. You have authority over demonic realms and demonic spirits you are in charge Amen. and you have to let him know you're in charge and you have to get up every day on purpose with your words speaking in the realm of the spirit out loud with your mouth you can't think it you have to open up your mouth and you have to talk to the, the demonic realm right. and let them know you're not playing Okay, And then once you learn how to do that, you're going to know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Greater is he who is in me than he's of the word. Of the world. So then the other thing about the power of your tongue is you have the power to bless yourself or curse yourself. So be very, very careful about what you're saying. If you're going through a struggle a financial struggle, don't say I'm struggling because you're going to stay in a struggle longer. Amen. Go find a promise in the Bible uh, such as Philippians uh, 4.19, for my God shall supply all my need Amen. according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus now to God be the glory forever. Let that come out your mouth. Amen. Because, you know, God's word is alive. It's, it's full of power. Amen. It's very anointed. So when you put God's word in your mouth and you speak it out loud in the realm of the spirit, the enemy can't do anything about it. He can't stop your blessing from coming. He can't stop your healing from coming. He can't stop your miracle from coming because he cannot do anything with God's word. He's no match for God's word. So you must learn how to fight in the realm of the spirit. And a lot of times, if, it, if anybody's connected to me on the uh, Facebook page, you'll see that I'm very serious. I'm not playing with the enemy. I've gone through so many warfares and so many battles in the realm of the spirit. I know how to swing this sword. And the sword is found in your Bible. And God is looking for you to stand up 
and do your part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, I can remember when I first gave my heart to the Lord, I did not know how to fight in the realm of the spirit, with the sword of the spirit, with the word of God coming out of my mouth. And I used to cry. I think every day for almost a year I cried because the enemy was kicking my butt. He was coming at me from every angle. I was always going, uh, you know, for prayer and all of that. And then one day, God said, you better open up your mouth and fight. You better open up your mouth, take authority. I gave you a dominion and authority in the earth. You're created in my image. And you're going to have to take authority like Christ. And then I just, I said, okay, God. I got up and I started to do what God told me to do. And I haven't been having any problems. So instead of, you know, wah, 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 you know, crying all the time. Now when you come at me, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready. I fight. I find them, and I grew up really quick. I grew up real quick in Christ because I got tired of getting beat up um, by the enemy. And I, I learned how to swing the word of God with my mouth. As soon as I opened up my eyes, I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I, as soon as I open up my eyes, I start swinging the, swinging the word of God. And I go through my whole day in peace the way I commanded it to be this morning. So every day, get up, command your day. Tell your day how it's going to be so the enemy don't tell you how it's going to be. Amen. And then you'll learn how to fight with the Word of God. And remember, you got to get in the Word every day. You can't just get in the Word once a week or three times a week. You have to get in there every day. Amen. And fill up with the Word of God. My favorite thing to do is once a week, um, I don't have the television on, um, and I just lay down in my bed, and I get out the Old and the New Testament, and I just put my earphones in my ears, and I just fill up with the Word of God, just meditating on His Word. Because when you fill up with the Word of God, you're filling up with God. In the beginning was the Word of God. The Word of God was with God. The Word of God was God. God is the Word. Okay, it's just another form of God. And it's very active. It's very alive. So like if you have a headache and, you, and you're noticing you have something going on with your body, you can get in the Word of God long enough and it disappear. Why? Because it's anointed. God's Word is anointed. And then another example I want to share with you is I remember uh, one year, because I'm a, also a member um, of Word of Faith. So before I come to this church, I'm worshiping, you know, at my home church. And I remember um, the pastor's wife, uh, during a woman's meeting, she was trying to teach us about how powerful our words were. And that, you know, when we speak words, God hears them. He hears what we're saying. And you know, faith comes by hearing. So when you speak words, you you can either have faith for whatever it is you're saying. It could it could be for good or for bad. Hopefully, you're only you're going to learn to start speaking good. And so she said, uh, "This is t you know going back in time." She said, "Get out a cassette tape and uh, begin to uh, speak your heart's desires into the cassette tape." And then she said, when you get finished with that, play it back and listen to it, you know, throughout your day. She says, watch how quickly those words come to pass. Mm -hmm. She was giving us homework assignment mm -hmm. so that we could see how powerful our words were. Well, I kind of sat on that message for a while because I was like, that is so strange. I had never heard nobody say that before. I'm like, I've never heard of that. And I waited for a whole year, and then one day the Holy Spirit dealt with my heart. Would you just do what the lady told you to do, you know? And I did. I, I got out a cassette tape. This was back in the day, and I put all my heart's desires on there. And I would sit back, and I just play it every day. And my faith was growing because I heard my own voice. You know what I'm saying? On the tape, and I'm telling you, every week something was manifesting, something was happening. Good things were happening. It's because I practice putting the word of God in my mouth or speaking words that I actually wanted to happen, and I got a chance to watch them manifest. See, that's the part I'm talking about. You're created in the image of God. You can speak things until they come until existence. Now, God is the one who brings the full manifestation. 
but you have a part to play with God. You actually partner with God, just like Jesus did. You know, when Jesus walked the earth, he partnered with the Father. Jesus uh, cursed the fig tree. Remember when the fig tree, uh, he cursed the fig tree and it withered up and died? That's that same power that the church walks in, but for some reason nobody's really teaching it or preaching it or putting the weapons in the saints' hands so they'll know how to fight uh, and have victory. There was a time when I used to go through test and trial. I looked like I went through test and trial. You could see I was struggling. It was like, poor child, just pray for him. You know what I'm saying? But now you can't tell because I'm so used to, to fighting and using my weapons that, you know, I know for a fact that nothing is more powerful than prayer and the word of God and living right. Now, speaking of living right, it's, it's really imperative that you practice. Practice walking up right before God. Because if you're not practicing living right, and you don't make that full decision to serve God with your full heart, soul, and mind, you short-circuit the power. Well, I don't want to short-circuit the power and get the enemy hand over me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, um, to block the enemy from having control in my life, I practice. I get up every day making a decision that I'm going to honor and that I'm going to obey God. Mm -hmm. And as a result, God saw my decisions to please him and began to turn up the power. And as a result of that, I began to see all kinds of signs and wonders uh, follow my ministry. I remember when I was a, a baby Christian, just learning Learning about God, learning how to walk with Him, coming out the world, you know what I'm saying? Not knowing how to walk up right before the Lord. You know, I didn't know everything about walking up right with God because I wasn't really reading the Bible, you know. And so um, I began to walk up right before the Lord. And I remember leaving um, a picnic area. It was a, a company picnic, and uh, I saw somebody out, a man uh, out on the ground. He looked like he was. Um, unconscious. I wasn't a nurse at the time and I just had this urgency in my spirit. I stopped my car. I got out. There was a, a nurse already at the scene. She told me the man was dead. He didn't have a pulse and she had already called 911. I, I said, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a child of the Most High God. Is it all right if I just lay my hands and pray on the man? And she said, yes. Yeah. So I just laid my hands on the dead man. He was dead. And I just prayed a simple healing prayer and asked God to restore the man's uh, health. His eyes popped open. Um, his spirit entered back into his body. And then he jumped up in the middle of the street and he was trying to figure out what just happened. And the nurse looked at me and she says, when I get sick, will you come and pray for me? Mm -hmm. Now see, that's what the church is supposed to be doing. Now I was a baby Christian when that happened. I just decided that I was going to believe the word. And so, you know, when God says, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And we're still talking about words because if you're praying, you're dealing with words, right? When you have the Holy Spirit, things happen. All right. So you have an um, opportunity to believe all of God's word, part of his word, three-fourths of his word, or the whole, the whole deal. If you believe the whole deal, you're going to have everything that God has for you. Amen. Now, I do have to say, uh, when I started to move in this area of obedience to God's word and uh, seeing God do great things you know, in my life, there were some naysayers, so you're going to come up against people who think you're crazy for believing God's word uh, and for miracles manifesting um, in your life. So you have you can't be soft walking with God. You have to be able to, you know, take some, you know, people saying crazy stuff against you and um, keep on uh, doing what you need to do in the earth because there's just too much going on right now. Do you know there are so many people out there who don't believe in God? They don't believe in the power of God. They don't believe that God still heals. They, they just don't. And when I'm outside, like say uh, uh, if I go to a grocery store, if I see somebody on crutches or a cane, or I can obviously tell they're not feeling well, I'll just ask them if, if it's okay if I, if I can pray. 
Either people are going to say yes or no. If they say yes, I just release the power of God in prayer. And people usually get delivered right there on the streets. Wherever I am, on the plane, in the grocery store, in the schools. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can remember uh, when my children were really little. Um, I was a stay-at-home mom. I think I shared that with you before. And um, my children were at school. And I was down in prayer. And the Holy Spirit told me to get up. It was like an urgency. Go to your children's school. He didn't tell me why, so I got up really quick, you know, took my robe off, put my clothes on, went to the school. I didn't know why I was going to the school. When I walked through the door, I didn't see anybody uh, in the hallway. All of a sudden, I saw one of my children's te uh, teachers run out the uh, classroom. She saw me come through the hall. She's like, oh, please go call 911. And then she slid up her back up against the wall and slid down on the ground. She, she passed out. I made a beeline to her. I just laid hands on her. I used my words. And I just put my hands on her and I commanded her to be healed in Jesus' name. Her eyes popped open again. She looked around to see if anybody saw her. She asked me to help her out. Took her back to her classroom. And then she told me that her blood pressure was out of control and she was blacking out that she was going to go back into her classroom, take her high blood pressure medication. But she thanked me for praying for her and helping her. She never did go to the hospital, but the next week, every day, I had teachers from that school in my house. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the heck is going on. You know, every day, you know, a group of teachers from my children's school would ring my doorbell, they would come inside my house. I was very friendly. I knew who they were. I would I let them come in and sit down. And then after maybe 20 or 15 minutes, they would, you know, they would leave and go home. Finally, I asked the teacher, I said, why do you guys keep coming to my door? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All this week, why are y'all there? They said, because every time we step in your house, we get healed. All right. That's because there's a lot of prayer went on in my house. It still goes on under my house. I could be having like a really bad day at work or something's going on. You know what I'm saying? I'm fighting the enemy. As soon as I step in my house, it's a haven. You know what I'm saying? The peace of God is there. The presence of God is there. It's because there's a lot of prayer in there. And we're not playing in that house. We're living holy in that house. So God can dwell in that house and do whatever it is he needs to do. So I just wanted to uh, make sure you guys understand that. And you start practicing. Practicing speaking the word of God. Um, if, if, if you're going through pains and sickness in your body, start saying, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed in my heart. So find the healing scripture. Psalms 103 is a good healing scripture. You can go in Psalms 103, meditate in the word, and God will heal you from all your diseases. There's a promise right in there if you go back in there and read it. So don't forget um, to, to meditate in the Word of God, speak the Word of God. If you need finances, Philippians 4.19, make sure you're paying your tithes and your offerings. Make sure you're doing your part. And then um, God will do his part. Because I've had God, uh, when I was going through financial struggles, you know, I would get out for uh, Philippians 4.19. You know, I was doing my part. And God would just speak to complete strangers. And they would walk up to me and hand me a big, huge check. They said, God told me to give you this. I've had people give me Mercedes Benz cars. I've had people give me houses. Complete strangers, people I don't even know. They'll walk up to me and say, God told me to give you this. So then you'll get a chance to see God really come into your life and really do something great for you. You'll always be the victor. You will never be the victim. 